Are you wondering how you can contribute to Funniest Thing? Don't flip out. Go to patreon.com forward slash funniest thing. Whoa! Oh! That would have been crazy. Welcome to the funniest thing. Yes. Where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Yes, it does. I'm Daryl. I'm Ed. And we're broadcasting live from Chobo Studios in... Beautiful downtown Van Nuys. Oh, wait. Indy's taking calls. Uh, but I need to ask Indy a question real quick after last week, you buddy. Yeah, what's up? First of all, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Are we recording the video this time? <laughs> <laughs> we are. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Just wanted to yep. have a little fun, man. But... um. Yeah, are you ex- as excited as we are for Nancy Norman to be here? Oh, it's always a special treat yeah. to uh, <laughs> hear and see Nancy. So I'm excited. Let's do it. Amen. Amen. All yeah. right. Today's show is called The Light Touch. Yeah. Reverend Nancy Norman. The Light Touch employs the most powerful ingredient in healing body, mind, and circumstances. Childlike faith. The Light Touch is the delightful touch. It's praying with a feather rather than a pickaxe. Choosing to apply the light touch to our seeming problems redirects our mind from worry-fueled self-determination to absolute trust that God is working things out on our behalf. It's the non-resistant route. With the light touch, there is no struggle to overcome as it is surrendering to the power behind all life, love. On this episode, Daryl and Ed remind listeners that faith plus love gets us in tune with the harmonizing force of God that makes miracles happen. And during the second segment, the delightful Reverend Nancy Norman gets us singing in tune with the universe with today's reading, Believe. Ah. Ah. So, uh, Ed. Yes, sir. Speaking of... Praying with a feather instead of a pickaxe. Listen to this. I got some great news here. Nice. From a little book we highly recommend. I've had it met for many years. It's called, there it is, Creative Mind and Success by Ernest Holmes. Oh, yeah. This is the first book he wrote in 1912 or so. the same book we've been working on with Nancy Norman during her, our, um, the, the, day, the Thursday. Um, What's the name of that? Pro- Infinite Prosperity Call. Yes. So 1919, this was written. And I think it's one of his best. Yes. Um, a lot of people have that big, giant book, including Daryl and Ed, called Science of Mind. Yeah, it's kind of like the handbook. of. Science. Yeah, and we found out from uh, a uh, longtime minister, yes. Dr. Elizabeth Marshall, in... in uh, Science of Mind, or what was this called? Religious Science? I always mix them up. Same thing, though. Yeah. yeah. No, I I would mix it up with Christian Science. So Religious Science. And she let us know that the Big Thick book is actually a compilation of all these other books. Right. That the people who wanted to turn it into a church, right, which really wasn't what Ernest Holmes wanted. You got to have a big, thick book to throw at people. He wanted it to be a, be a real church. He actually, his real dream, he had an institute in downtown Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And his, his intention was that these teachings would be taught in colleges. Right. Starting in California. Right. Um, but, you know, a group after that wanted to turn it into a... Uh, not a denomination, but sort of more like a church, which he really was not in favor for. Um, so here we go, because it's all about practicing it, practicing the actual principles. Yes. And there's a great reading, it's on page 62, where demonstration takes place. And there's two little readings, that one's on 62 and one's on 63. I'm just going to read a portion of it. Because it's so positive, it takes all the stress out of my mind about how much effort I need to put into prayer in order for it to work, Yeah, which is very little. And here it says this, does, does demonstration take place in the patient, the practitioner, or in the mind of God? 
And for those who aren't familiar, he's just talking about the practitioner means if you're praying for someone, then you're the practitioner. If you're praying for someone's health, wealth, whatever it is they might be going through, and the patient is the recipient of your prayer. Now, this can also be one and the same. You could be the patient and the practitioner. True. And applying these same ideas to yourself. So let us see. We are in the mind of God, so it must take place there. But the patient is also in the mind of God, or there would be two minds. And so it must take place in the mind of the patient also. But that is the place of God. So what does it matter where it takes place? That is the best news. And it works instantaneously. I was uh, a couple of days ago, even with, you know, you see groups of people uh, or something that may look a little uh, daunting. Well, the first reaction is, oh, I got to deal with this. But because I had read this, I go, no, my mind is connected to their mind. Yes. And if I start thinking negative, like this is something I have to overcome. I am moving so far out on my own. You know what I mean? I'm all alone now. Right. And this is that that misconception I had of courage because it's what it seemed like people were trying to encourage me to do, mm -hmm. which is overcome fear with bully-like fear. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, I have yeah. a fear about something, but I am going to bully myself through the fear. Right. And that never works. It's it's exhausting, it's stressful, and I never got the results because you're actually you're not even you're actually undermining you you're reinforcing the fear. Right. Rather than eliminating it. I'm reinforcing yes. what I'm afraid of by making it so big and then telling myself I have to bully through this thing. Right. And it could be finances. It could be dealing with car dealerships. Yep. So I decided I can't do that. And I had just read this a few nights before. Another thing we recommend, any of these spiritual books that you like, we don't care which one it is, the one you like the most, put it on your nightstand and just read two pages before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Because... Look what it did to me. So I'm making the approach, and I said, I can't, do, like, I caught myself thinking, and I go, no, my mind is in God's mind, and God's, and that includes everyone's mind, and this is why prayers work over long distance. Yes. So I just started going, no, I'm sending love. I don't want to, because courage is telling myself, I am definitely going to meet with a problem. I am definitely going to have to fight something. That's what that old idea of courage yes. is. The new idea of courage is like the story where Jesus told, who was the guy who grabbed the spear and was going to cut the, cut the Roman's ear off when Jesus got arrested? Uh, yes. Who was it? Mike Tyson? P no, it was either Peter or... Maybe Peter. Maybe Nancy knows. Who who was the disciple that grabbed the spear and was going to cut off the cut off the Roman's ear when Jesus was being arrested? And he said, "I'll Google it." He said, "If you," he goes, "If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Besides, you're a fisherman, not a soldier. Yes. Put that thing down." So uh, and so that's the same with us. It does not work. So instead, I reversed the thought. I said, "No." I'm sending love to these people because that's yes. what I want to meet. I want to meet love. I don't want to meet a fight. And what happened? Changed. The, it, it turned out better than expected is what happened. There was nothing there to fight. And I was treated with spontaneous joy and respect rather than what I was anticipating. Yeah. So it goes on to say this. By the way, it's in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 26. And who, who's the guy who grabbed the sword and, um, and cut the... I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. So we do not have to project our thought. This is, the, this is the big relief. This is the praying with a feather, not a pickaxe. I don't have to project my thought. I mean, I don't have to think I got to overcome the thoughts in the other person's mind. I don't have to try to overcome and wrestle with the ideas that I'm, I'm making up. Yes. 
So it says we do not have to project our thought because mind is right at hand and never leaves us at any time. And that we have to do is know within ourselves and when we are absolutely convinced, we will have made the demonstration. And here it is. As far as the practitioner is concerned, that means us, the one praying, all that he has to do is to convince himself. And I want to be convinced of that. And it says here, if you have a simple, childlike faith, it will produce. But it should give us a greater faith when we know something of the way that the law operates. So understanding these laws reinforces my belief in them to apply them. And the childlike faith was, there was a big part of me that knew this is going to work. Even though I wasn't 100% convinced in the moment, because I want it to work. Right. So, and here's the second little part from page 63. The way to give a treatment is, first of all, to absolutely believe that you can. Believe that your word goes forth into a creative power, which at once takes it up and begins to operate upon it. Feel that to this power, all things are possible. It knows nothing but its own power to do that which it wishes to do. It receives the impress of your thought and acts upon it. Nice. And this is really cooperating with the solution. Wait, where is are you going to spill the beans? Where the heck were you going? Or are you, are you rather not say? Well, there were several times, but this was just on the hill. Oh, there, okay. was a, there was a crowd of people doing something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. Yeah, you're usually good about throwing it out there. Well, yeah. this, this, is, uh, this, is, this also goes along with the same thing. Yes. And it is, this is from Ed's favorite book, One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. On page 89. Yeah, you know, someone uh, recommended that to me. And then the very next day, I found that in one of those like birdhouse free libraries on a block that I just happened to drive by and get out of my car for some reason I wasn't sure of. And there was a brand new copy of that. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to be living with an alcoholic to, yeah. to enjoy the benefits because this is all new thought. So this... Talks about, like I was saying, this idea of courage, this old idea of courage, thinking we got to battle through things. It- well, yeah. And, and what, you know, like I want to say too, what you're talking about, you, you are addressing the fear in the one place where we really can effectively address it, was, which is within ourselves. Yes. To be able to face our own fear, which is what most, you know, well, until we realize that, we, when we think we're being tough, when I used to think I was being tough, I was really running away from facing my own feelings. And the beauty of it is it turns into an exercise like you're saying, courage, meaning heart, from the heart, yes, the core. The right I, courage. The French word core is like C-E-O-U-R means heart. And so it just makes me realize like the right courage is about love. Yes. It really is about dipping into love and, and addressing the fear. And for some reason, when our mind is running, the scariest place it it doesn't want to look inside, but we consciously look within and treat the concern, as we've talked about many times, instead of the condition, you yes. treated the concern within yourself, dissolve the concern, and lo and behold, the condition may never even existed in the first place, but at the very least, now it no longer concerns us, and it transforms. There's so many different ways it transforms, so that's a great story. Well, the best way is that this is not just a mental exercise. That's right. That temporary relieves us of our concern. Mm -mm. The fact, the only reason I do this and like doing it is because when I do do it, it transforms the circumstances. Yes, it does. It's not just me going, okay, I'm not going to buy into fears. I'm going to reduce my anxiety by tapping my forehead, you know, or whatever things which can get you to a place of relief. But there's something about knowing that when my mind stops fighting and joins with the forces with yes. love which and faith when you combine love with faith mm-hmm. miracles happen yes and, and and it's principle there too because faith i mean fear is always based on misunderstanding yes of the, the true principle which is love so when i stay in fear so my fa- like my father-in-law texted me something just yesterday and i've been talking about this like when someone asks you for help but they like tie in a little like 
little comment that makes it feel like like you owe it to them or something. And I was just talking about how what that really is a reflection of is the person who's asking for help feels insecure about asking. So they feel like they have to do this little thing, right? But we don't know. It doesn't feel that way. A lot. It feels like, who's? how dare he say that about me or whatever, you know? So I was with my son when I got the text and I took the time just like you. I was like, I, I, he laughed and that was helpful because I showed him the text and I took the time. I said, son, I just got to take a moment to get back into myself because I had lost myself because of the way I felt. And then all of a sudden, as I let go of the fear like you did, I realized that's just, that's just Bob being Bob. That has nothing to do with me. He always does things. You know, like, and then I let go of that and I ended up just sending a loving, okay, no problem. And then I said, how are you feeling today? And I turned it into a love. And since then, the texts have turned into like me recognizing that I'm helping this person yeah. when they're nervous rather than how dare they say all that stuff. To me. It's like changed the whole thing. And I'm not afraid. Like you said, it's just, it goes beyond, like you said, just, now I'm okay. I can deal with it. It is transforming the yeah. whole situation to realize I have nothing to fear. What was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know because it's hard for me to just, especially through some of the scarier times I went yeah. through earlier in this practice. Right. I hear you. When I was working at the police department, it was hard to just go, oh, that's just them being them. Right. You know, yeah. So I had to believe yeah. that these, but it was the best training ground. I had to believe that no harm was going to come to me. Yeah, if, you and I, if was, I, if I yeah. believed this. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you have criminals, <laughs> I mean, a guy with paper bags on his hands because you got to test them for for gunshot residue. Right. So you cover them with paper bags on his hands and. It's you're not anonymous, folks. When you're mm -hmm. I, my name tag, and it's my last name. Right. It was probably the only Fazaro in Hawaii. I could guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's looking at you, and the police officer is holding him. About for some reason, I was right in front of him right. after receiving this, as we're like trying to get yeah. this guy in a place, and he's looking right at me. He goes, Fazaro, I'm going to find you and kill you. Yeah. I'm like, okay, right. Like, how do you deal with that? And especially since just yeah. a few weeks earlier, a friend of mine, um, Troy Barboza, another officer, uh -huh. um, was working undercover, and um, they shot him through his living room. They found out where he lived. They shot him through his living right, room and right, killed him. Right. So I was. So I'm like, I mean, this is like real insane fear. This yeah. is like. Well, yeah, it's same crazy. for me. I, my training ground, not the exact same, was working with like violent behavior people. They threw like eight to 19 year old people who couldn't speak and were all kinds of violent. They, they're like, oh, you're the new guy. You're going to teach them. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not quite as the level, but it was looking you in the eye and doing yes. and like having to have real faith that you're going to be safe. So both of us got like the best training we possibly could have, because if we could apply it there. Well, that's it. So, yeah. and Dugan was teaching me all this stuff, and I would just say, nope. And mm -hmm. I would like go in full eye of the tiger yes. into love is the only thing that's going to get me out of this. Mm -hmm. I can't run around worried about, am I going to get shot at any moment? Right. Am I going to get attacked? And, uh, or, you know, and there was many, many other things that happened. But it was such a good training ground yep. to really work this. And it wasn't – the training ground was when it seems like – this is the best training ground. Let me explain. Like when I'm in over my head, mm -hmm. since I've had these principles, when I'm in over my head and it seems like nothing else will work, I believe like Moses – and I am, and I could split rivers. That's how much I get into it. And I'm, and I feel happy, secure because I'm all in. Mm -hmm. It's the little broken shoelaces, right? Where I tend to allow myself to do exactly what I'm going to read here, which is the only thing that holds us back. And this is from One Day at a Time in Allen. On if you have it, it's March 29th. Kirk Chelson, our friend in Germany, is the one who convinced me to read this. Same. 
And here we go. Um, so it talks about the fact that some of us had turned our backs on God. I did at a point because I was like, what is this? It's for little old ladies. I threw I threw God out with the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. I thought, you know, what is this? How right. does this help anything? Some superhero who lived in the dark ages? I got problems now. Right. You know, oh, he died for us. What does that mean? I, I'm going over my head here. Right. So it was such a relief to learn that this is a practical mental approach to living that transforms everything from the inside out. So look, some of us have turned our backs on God, determined to go our own way under our own power. And that's the old fashioned idea of courage I had. That was not from the heart. It was all from the head. And I got to overcome something. But listen what the, what that really is. This is like a child who walks into a dark room and refuses to turn on the light. When he stumbles and hurts himself, is the darkness to blame? If we are going somewhere and we reject the power of a train or a car to take us there, whose fault is it that our arrival is so long delayed? Yes. And the best quote is this. This is my Achilles heel, folks. This is the thing I wish I could give up, and I, and I do in moments. But like I said, the little broken shoelaces, the things that, I, that appear like I should be able to control the outcome if I do a certain thing, sometimes causes this. But learning this helps us not to fall into this, and this is what it is. Unless I love my martyrdom and cling to it, I need not be alone in freeing myself from whatever troubles me. Yes. So think about that when the itty bitty pity committee. Yes. Or you start going, oh, I can't believe it. Why is this happening? What did I do wrong? Yes. I thought I've been living by this stuff. How is this happening to me? Yes. But that's the only thing that's going to keep me from it. Yeah, I got to read this. This is from Ernest Holmes from today from Science of Mind 365. He talks about what you're talking about. He says, fear robs the memory of happiness because it dwells upon the limitations and morbidities of the past. It robs the future of pleasurable and enthusiastic anticipation because it's casting a shadow of its past into the future. It robs today of the possibility of fulfillment because it denies the good we might experience in the moment in which we live. And this is what we're talking about today. How much better it would be if we could think as a child thinks, abandoning ourselves to the integrity of the miracle-working universe in which we live. That is perfect. It goes perfect with this. I just want to wrap it up with this one. This is from The Magic of the Word yes. by May Rowland. You can get all these books we mentioned you could find on Amazon or online, some of them at your local library. Some of them are on audio tape, Yes, um, audio books. So listen to this. God in the midst of me, midst uh, in the mists uh-huh. of me, mm-hmm. directs all my organs and functions into a harmonious pattern. We just have to mentally agree with that. Yes. Even though temporarily you do not feel that what you have said is true, just keep using that idea. Know that God's energy, life, and intelligence are moving in and through every part of your body, doing a perfect healing work in you. Tell yourself that you never again will think of yourself as sick, weak, old, tired, or incapable, that you are through with the old ways of thinking about your body. Think of yourself as a spiritual being. Think of yourself as alive with health, vigor, and vitality, filled with light and shining with health. And I wrote to myself, worrying about My healing is the only thing getting in the way of my healing. Thank you, God. I am young, healthy, and strong. My body knows it, and my body shows it. Dude, this book by Genevieve Berend called uh, Your Invisible Power, um, this is how simple it can be, too. It goes right along with what you're saying. In this section 11, she says, In every word you use, there is a power germ which expands and projects itself in the direction your word indicates and ultimately develops into physical expression. For example, and this is how simple it could be, you wish the consciousness of joy, repeat the word joy secretly, persistently, and emphatically. 
Just repeat the word joy. The repetition of the word joy sets up a quality of vibration which causes the joy germ to begin to expand and project itself yes. into your whole being until it is filled with joy. Another may give you cause for joy, but no one can be joyous for you. Joyous is a state of consciousness, and consciousness is purely mental. And this, is, this is the, goes along with this as well. Once a thing seems normal to you, it is as surely yours through the law of growth and attraction as it is yours to know addition after you have learned the use of figures. And this line I love too, she said, So be yourself and enjoy life in your own divine way. Do not fear to be true to yourself, for everything you want, wants you. And today, I was taking my son to the airport quickly, and I wasn't able to do my full no morning routine, because it was a, uh, I had to get up earlier and just whatever. So I, was, I thought about our show, um, The Light Touch, and I just said, God, let the drive be full of love. Let me stay connected to my son, because I'm about to say goodbye to him. When I say goodbye to him, let me be flooded with love and joy. And I just let it go. I said, that's enough. We're driving to the airport. And all of a sudden I realized we're driving the same route that I always drove him to school when he was younger. And he's getting ready to graduate from college. So this is wow. the last time I'm going to drive him to school down the same route. And that as I thought that, I realized, man, when I, because of living this way and with, with Daryl's help and I used to drive a, a, an old Camry up that road, and then it turned into a new, new Tiguan, and then it turned into a newer Tiguan. And I realized by living this stuff, my life has gotten better, richer, happier. And it made me, it put everything else in my life into perspective. Why am I worrying about everything? It gets better and better and better. And it was just, it's that simple of a prayer, because all we're really doing is cooperating with what the good that already wants to happen. Fear is nothing more than a resistance of good. It is, it's no power unto itself. There's one power. It is good. So whatever I have to do to release the resistance to cooperate will work, no matter, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. I got to read this quick letter. Yes. By the way, send us anything. Funniest thing, P.O. Box 1312, Culver City, California, 90232. Thank you to the Patreon subscribers. We've had some new Patreon subscribers. If you're on Patreon, every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we do a little prosperity talk. Thank you to everyone that's been tuning in. I know Sherry Knight and Susan Sly and um, uh, what was the other girl's name? Katarina have, a, have been sending notes saying how much they appreciate it, and we appreciate you. So this, I got this cool letter here from Yogi Bajrapala, who um, really loves the show, comments a lot on Facebook. And he said, here's this funny spiritual story. The day when Chelly Campbell, whose book is The Wealthy Spirit, was in Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed. He said, I had been envisioning enrolling in school for a while. And that morning I was praying and asking higher power to give me a sign as to how to go forward with the school or should I go forward. I told higher power, I want a sign that I can't ignore or not comprehend. So Chelly mentioned the clown chakra. Yes. As you know, I teach yoga and I also love to entertain kids of all ages. So I had been considering enrolling in professional clown school. Oh my God. Yes, clown school. Well, I got my sign from the universe. When Chelly told you about the clown chakra, I knew in that moment that was my sign just for me. I'm now enrolled at the Cheerful Clown Academy. I will start in May. It's a six-week class. So from Bhakti Yoga teacher to Unity Prayer Chaplain to now Bhakti Yoga Clown. I am now Yogi the Grateful Clown, bringing fun affirmations to everyone, teaching to juggle our thoughts from negative to positive ones. Wow. After all, I am a fun dementalist clown. <laughs> Can't wait to send you photos and videos. Can't wait to use positive songs like the new Thank You song uh, that Janet Manning wrote that you brought to life for me. From Texas, I am Yogi the Grateful Bhakti Clown, and the follow-up that came in said, Cheerful day to you, and officially, I have officially enrolled in Clown Academy. I'm now Yogi D, the Grateful Clown, healing one smile at a time. Let's activate our clown chakra. Let everyone know the actual title of that book, because it's not just your invisible power. It's actually all th th the well, cover. This, I don't recommend this. Really? I recommend getting just the, your invisible oh, power. Oh, really? That's why I didn't say it. But, I mean, if you want, there's a three-book collection. Her name's Genevieve Berend. So but, why don't you like that one? Because it feels more like a textbook from Ugh. school. Oh, that's You know what good. I mean? Like each book is meant to be light and easy. Yes. I kind of wish I had gotten just the Your Invisible Power book, but I, I feel like you might feel the same way. So I recommend just getting that one if, if it's not too late. Um, so 
Should we just take our three breaths and go to break and bring in yes. Nancy? Okay. So, this song, where did this song go? It's Katrina. It it's a head. surfer. All right, let's Don't you it. know the name? Yeah, but I was trying to think why did it occur to Cause me? Because you, you ride ca- you used the, the, waves, Katrina and the waves. Is that the name of the van? Yes. Oh, my God. Let's take a deep breath. Or is it Katrina and the wave? You can look it up. <sighs> I used to think maybe God loved me. No. How do you want to emphasize this? Because I girl, used like, to think. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I used to think maybe God loved me. <laughs> now, baby, I'm sure. <sighs> I used to think maybe God loved me. But now, baby, I'm sure. <laughs> I used to think, think maybe, maybe God, God loved, loved me. me. Now, oh, baby, baby, I'm, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. Yes. Coming up next. It's important <laughs> what you emphasize these days. So coming up next, let me emphasize the delightful Reverend Nancy Norman gets us singing in tune. That's a good thing. With the universe, with today's reading, Believe. Thank you for listening to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed from Chobo Studios. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey. It's the second segment you've all been waiting for with our special guest, Nancy Norman. Today's show is called The Light Touch. How you doing, Nancy Norman? I'm doing great, and I'm so looking forward to this wonderful time with you all. I thought it was interesting, as you were talking about uh, Ernest Holmes uh, not wanting a church. That was true with the Fillmores. That was true with, with Divine Science. It was true with... Every single New Thought group, well, I shouldn't say every single, but I think it was every single New Thought group, they wanted to be teaching. And what um, what the Fillmores said before they start having churches, come and learn the way we look at the Bible and what we're teaching, and then go to your church, your Baptist church, your Jewish synagogue, your Catholic church, your, you know, whatever. Uh, and you'll just become a better a better Catholic or a better Jew or a better, better Baptist or Methodist. And so it was meant to begin with as a teaching. Yes. And I, I, I think it's still a teaching. Yes, it is. It's kind of interesting There's... about that because Jesus um, didn't really speak about churches. Jesus was probably a lot like the Fillmores as well, because really the church thing, if you think about it, is really the continuation of the Hebrew tradition just turned into a different yeah. teaching, right? But yeah. they're like, in no place inside there, in, in, in Jesus' teaching, did he ever speak about a church? I don't think, anyway. No. No. Oh, he no. did. Yeah, there's, he well, is quoted as saying, like, I'll build my but he church meant, upon. But he meant upon that faith, faith yeah. that Peter had, yeah, yeah. that belief that this, that we are, just like I read from the Ernest Holmes, we are part of that one mind. Yeah. We are all the sons of God. Yeah, right. So do you want to hear what used to be in the front of every Unity book? Yeah. And it says it all. And I believe this is who we are now. And in the front of every Unity book, it used to say, Unity is a link in the great educational movement inaugurated by Jesus Christ. Our objective is to discern the truth in Christianity and prove it. That's what we're doing when we're yes. when we're manifesting or making a demonstration. We're proving it. Yes. The truth is that we te- what we teach is not new. Neither do we claim special relations or discovery of new religious principles. Our purpose is to help and teach mankind to use and prove the eternal truth taught by the master. Is that fabulous? It's the best. So that's what they all wanted to do is just teach this. It's kind of like a new level of truth. Yes. A new level of understanding. Yeah. And in that piece that he used the word, who, uh, Charles Fermor wrote it, he, he used the word to discern you know, to 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 have the wisdom to discover. Isn't that great? It's fantastic. It's exciting. Yeah. 
to even think yeah. when I was first learning this stuff, I remember thinking, why didn't they teach me this in college? Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Did, Cause it's not offensive. Right. None of it uh, that doesn't set off any alarms. No. The, the only alarms it would set off is in the minds of the superstitious people who have a superstitious idea of uh, religion yeah. rather than I want to learn more of how right. I can embody more of these teachings. They're hung up on the do's and the don'ts. Yeah. And I shouldn't look at any other books except the ones that are specifically given a thumbs up by my organization, yeah. which is closed minded and not helpful. But like it says in the beginning, Nancy, it's true. These, it doesn't, none of these ideas conflict. No. With any religious entity, if you go to the source of their teachings, it just makes it easier for the student to apply it in contemporary everyday, to understand it so they could apply it to everyday contemporary situations. That was like, when that hit my mind that clear that I thought that, I was like, why don't they teach this in college? I was so, because I was only 23 at the time, I'm going, man, yeah. this would yeah. be awesome. You know, and then like I gave that example earlier, and I'm using it in scary situations and in not so scary situations and getting the same positive outcomes. I was like, come on, man, what's going on here? Yeah. But then again, I just have to keep applying it on myself. Yeah. And uh, that's it. And then we become teachers just because we are living it. And so we become an example exactly exactly like Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus, rabbi means teacher. Yep. He was a teacher. He was a rabbi. And he, he lived by example. And somewhere th through the ages, we put him on a pedestal someplace and that we could never, ever achieve what Jesus achieved. But the eye opener for me was when I read and I really got it was these things that I do and you can do an even greater things. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best line in there. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And, and the other, the other thing that there's two of my favorite, that one. And the other one is um, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm. Yes. You know, we weren't, God didn't want, want us to suffer, right. to struggle. Uh, I just don't believe a loving, caring God would want that. I'm not, in fact, I know that just would not be, that would not be in, in the thinking of a loving, caring God. Well, if that and, was the case, yeah. we would never heal from any ailment. That, that's true. <laughs> we would never yeah. heal from anything that's if right. that was true. So yeah. it's yeah. not true. And the only thing that gets in my way, too, is listening to other people where I get concerned about maybe them getting upset because I have the audacity to believe <laughs> that this can work for me. Do you understand what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like I, I'd be afraid to say to people, and then that starts like what I really believe is possible, even though it's all positive. It's not yeah. saying anything harmful. It's saying the hopeful positive outcome yeah. is possible. But because that martyrdom is so strong yeah. in some people that they yeah. will get they'll they'll get angry if you tell them that there's a potential for something positive to happen. Or if in some incidences where I've shared to a group um, and I seem to be reasonably happy when I do, um, people in the, someone in the audience uh, made a comment when there was discussion afterwards that, you know, some of us aren't so lucky when people come in here and say how great it is. And oh. I'm thinking to myself, I start forgetting who I am and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, wow. I, he's right. Maybe I don't have problems. And then I had to tell myself, Daryl, you've had plenty of problems and you've overcome them. 
And what's saving me now is, uh, whose book is it in? It's one of the books. Ah, oh, it's either Florence Scoville Shin or it's the May Rowland book. But it's, we got to remember when people are saying things that seem negative because they're in that martyrdom brain that, that, you know what I mean? That Mm -hmm. hypnosis, which we all, I fall into it a lot and I got to kick myself out of it. But, um, when someone's coming at me with that, I got to remember, wait a minute, this, this is the joy that faith has built. This is the health that faith has built. Mm -hmm. This isn't like, I just got this. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm exuberant about it because I'm proving to myself that faith really did transform my perspective and my circumstances. So it takes me out of thinking I should shrink down so I don't upset people. You know, it's like when Jesus said, you know, take the, take the bucket off the, off your light. You know, sometimes we can be in situations where we feel we're going to, I better Bring, right. I better dial it down because people mm-hmm. might be offended if I'm too happy or or believe that there's a possibility for a good outcome in yes. this situation. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, no, Daryl, you cannot no. do that. It doesn't mean be belligerent and mm. demand other people believe as I do. But what it does mean is, Daryl, don't diminish your belief within you. Yes. Don't let this diminish your faith in this, in the moment. Yeah. You're holding that higher thought. Yes. You're holding that higher vision. I, I, what you're saying, Daryl, I, I heard just recently of a minister that gave a talk on, on uh, prosperity and that you can always experience prosperity and you need to apply the principles that, that we all know so well. And this man came through the through the line and said, "Wow, you know what? Prosperity. It's good, fine for you to say it, but you don't know what I have. Um, I have um, I have this and I have that, and I they're going to repossess my car. I can't make my my house payment, and 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 he went on and on and on. And the minister said, "Oh my goodness, look how powerful you are." And he said, "Powerful. Well, look what I'm. Look what I'm living with." He, she said, "No. Look how powerful you are. That that look at all the limitations that and lack that you have that you have brought into your life." <laughs> yes, yes, love that. And that's what. And yes, <laughs> he said, "You're just as powerful. You're just as powerful to turn that right around and create everything you want." You know what? I love that story. That's I great. love that. My favorite quote from Charles Fillmore, and it's in the book Prosperity, and it's this. When you turn the great power of your mind on thoughts of plenty, you will have plenty regardless of what those around you are saying or doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. funny. You were talking, it uh, made me think of Chuck. Feel more, and about what he's what we talked about last week, which is our job is to convert the thoughts in our own mind, and and Reverend Ike was talking about this as well. So, so when someone else approaches us, like in the case of that minister, I mean that's an audacious thing, and takes a lot of confidence to be able to actually say that in the moment to somebody. Yes, when they approach you that way, because he didn't internalize it, he's converted his own mind, so that he's not. Tempted, like I was thinking about Jesus in the Bible is one of one, right? Like we all, I mean, it's a teaching method for us to recognize that we are the Christ. But in the stories, he's not looking outside of himself. No. Everyone around him, including his closest disciples, are questioning him most of the time. And he still keeps going to the Father within. So to be able to live that way is super powerful. Because like in my when my father-in-law texted me and it triggered something— in the past, 
I would waste energy. I'm going to show him like I'm going to convert him instead of this is an opportunity for me to convert my yes, voices totally. so that I no longer feel tempted to go down this road of self. And in that way, I do. I am his salvation also, because now yes. I'm what happens is when someone throws around all, uh, all that amount of doubt. Most of the time, because people aren't tapping into their own courage and their own confidence and their own spirit on a regular basis, they get converted to fear and yeah. they reflect it back to him. And this whole misunderstanding continues and continues. So, but to be able to have the audacity to convert myself in the face of anyone else and just, it's not about them. It's like you said, if I believe, I experience it. And when I was driving my son to school and thought about how much better my life has gotten, since I started practicing this stuff regularly and putting it to use with and really seeing it, it's, it's so awesome to now have that. It really gave me that sense in a new way. Like when I'm done, like life is an adventure. And when I'm done with this existed, this body, I'm going to be happy that I lived it this way. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes I beat myself up thinking like, why isn't it? Like, why do I keep facing things? But it's not about, we're all going to keep facing things and keep having to convert things and transform things. But the fact that we keep doing it, we may not see it always now in this, but I guarantee when, we're, when I slide back into this loving presence that is behind these bodies, I'm going to be like, oh my God, thank God I kept staying and practicing and applying and look how much, it's like the George Bailey, you know, we really will see like, oh my God, I really did have a positive effect and I, you know, mission accomplished type of thing. And we don't have to wait till we, to die or no. whatever to, to, for that to happen. But I got that yeah. strong sense like, wow, that's really what this is all about. I'm so thankful for these teachings, man. Totally. And the, the important thing is, is that we have to apply them. Yeah. There are literally no boundaries. There, there literally, uh, there's not lack and limitation. We create our own lack and limitation um, by the false beliefs that we hold in mind. Yeah. And I'm convinced that if we just take one false belief, one, and work with that one, no, like a, well, like, like a prosperity. Why not take that, that false belief we all have some false beliefs about prosperity believe me uh, we've gathered over the over the years but what what would happen if we just took one false belief about prosperity that we live that our income is limited or we live in a limited capacity in some way and simply say no that's a lie literally that's that's a lie yes i am a beloved child of god in whom he is well pleased, and he has supplied me with everything I need. Yeah. So my prosperity comes to me quickly with ease and under grace. Yes. And just hold that one little thought, then 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 there will be another false belief that will pop up. Yeah. Once we get that one solved, there's yeah. another little false belief. Yeah. But if we take one false belief and then another false belief. And see the truth in that false belief. Lift up our vision and see the truth in 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 that false belief. Then, before too long, we're prospering, we're healthy, we're happy, we're content, and we we feel there's a feeling of of hey, you know what? I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all, yeah, I'm all right. Anything good can happen. You know, I've been. Yeah. It's funny that you said this because all this is reminding me, and I just wrote this down. Remember, Daryl and I'd recommend, folks, ladies and gentlemen, yes. you have your little, you do your morning routine. We make it simple. You know, start off just seven. Give yourself just seven minutes. We say this probably, probably if you're if you've been listening to a while, you're probably going, oh no, here they go about a morning routine again. <laughs> right. But let me tell you something. Just. If you haven't started doing one, I can guarantee you, if you just take seven minutes, wake up seven minutes early. This is what I, this is exactly what I did, and I was introduced to this. Well, I got a job. I'm a busy attorney, or I'm a doctor. I, well, I was in the military, and I was the lowest ranking, so I was being told constantly to wake up at times I didn't want to wake up, do what I didn't want to do. But you know what? 
I always set my alarm because I wanted to believe this would transform mm -hmm. my life. And after you're, you, and we're just suggesting you find a few of these books that we mentioned or that you've already found on your own and just take your coffee, your tea, whatever, before you shower, before you get ready, just take that time alone on the couch, away from the kids, the wife, whatever, or the husband. But I can't. Yes, you can. I know people <laughs> from all walks of life that have kids, children, dogs, cats, and they commit to this. And you know what? Not one of them has complained, and all of them have sung its praises. And then you write a few things. You think about your to-do list now. It's all in perspective. So you start automatically without trying to figure out what the, how to prioritize it. You automatically know, oh, I, I could start with this. I thought I was going to race and go do that. No, I don't have to. Everything yes. falls into perspective. And the last thing we do is we jot down some of the positive things that came to us during the routine. Affirmations, something we read, we'll write it down again. Or... I kept thinking of this Bible verse. I didn't see it anywhere this morning, but I've heard it. I wrote it down in my book, and it's, do not quench the Spirit. And I just looked it up. It's Thessalonians 5.19. Do not quench the Spirit. And that's what, Nancy, I, I, you're talking about. It's, that's what we're all talking about today. Don't let other people's ideas yeah. or what you saw in the news or how dare I, 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 we have this weird subconscious belief way down in here. I know I do because I feel it every once in a while. How dare I wish for more prosperity when there are other people less fortunate. Oh, yeah. that is a killer mm -hmm. because that yeah. doesn't, that does not help them. That doesn't help yeah. me. And you know what, folks? Two things are bad. One, to despise people who are wealthy, because then you'll never be one of them. Yeah. And two, to think you don't deserve to be wealthy because there are other people less fortunate. Well, first of all, about people being wealthier than us. Nobody gets wealthy, at least in America, or I would say anywhere, without making other people wealthy. Nobody, yeah. even if it's the worst possible person you think is wealthy, right. and maybe they've done some rotten things, but you know what? They've created factories. They've created trucks and cars. Henry Ford is still blessing people and helping people make money because of his automobile. Not just the people making the automobile, right. the people who could drive to and from work. The, it's crazy when you really think about it. Yeah. Someone was crying about Amazon. I, I, screw Amazon. I'm going, well, wait a minute. Let's think about Amazon, uh, whatever his name is. I don't know the Bezos. guy. Bezos. Bezos. How dare. <laughs> and I go, wait a minute. Let's think about this for a minute. Do you realize he's helping a lot of people? So yeah. you, you want to get rid of Bezos. What about all these young people that drive the the Amazon trucks in my neighborhood that are delivering packages. What about all these cardboard companies that are manufacturing the boxes? What about the tape that goes into tape? Do you know how many people are getting wealthy? What about all the small business people who don't have the money for rent to have a brick and mortar store? Now they could sell their creative wares effortlessly through Amazon. Right. So, so let's throw away the despising the rich people. Yes. Well, what about the people that I think, oh, well, there are people suffering? Well, I learned I was suffering before I came to these believings. Before I, I didn't have parents or anything when I came to this. I was barely surviving as an E1 in the, in the military because I was busted down to lower than boot camp. And, but you know what? I was determined because this, I wanted to believe the silly idea that if I changed my thoughts for the better, then my circumstances would change for the better. Yeah. I wanted to believe it was that absurd. And you know what? It's that 
This is why so many people rebuke this, because it seems too silly. But you know what? We're all imagining all the time, and we're all creating our reality all the time. So not, why not get on board and cooperate with God, who's all love and doesn't do spite work, yeah. instead of what I do sometimes when I want to be a martyr? Right. You guys are yeah. lucky. You got all the bricks. You're lucky, Ed. You got yeah. a wealthy father-in-law. What do I got? I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, and the world is. And, and that find... kills me. It doesn't totally. hurt, Ed. It kills me. And the, the world, like if you go to Santa Monica, go to a lot of recovery centers, you're going to find just as many people that have really wealthy parents, but they're fighting the demons in their brain and they're a homeless. Yes. They don't have, they can't maintain anything. And so it's an equal opportunity employer that when we believe yes. in lack with, and resentment, uh, bitterness, lack of, like all of these things, when we see ourselves low and we go between we're better than and worse than yeah. everyone else, I'm telling you, it's the, it's so funny that we, that these things are looked down upon, like by the way we've been uh, academically kind of taught. It's very much like the Pharisees, right? Like, Jesus blew the the truth out of the box. There's no more box. <laughs> There's no more box. It's just a dude with a sandals and a cloak walking around. No church. Nothing. Just the truth. The Father within. And I think because of the way consciousness works, we keep trying to hem it back in to the box because we try to keep going back to what we're used to. We keep trying to quench that spirit. Yeah, yeah. we keep trying. And then, then the new thought teachers come along. We don't need the box. All we need yeah. is a room where we can talk about this, and we don't even need that. We can use a radio show or a book, or we'll send it to you. Goes back into the box, turns back into a box. And the belief, the, the people get hypnotized again. Now Daryl and Ed have a podcast where you can listen to it anywhere. But it's not Daryl and Ed. Indy no. and I were just talking about this. There's some power outside that has made this show happen, and now Yogi... Bajra Paula got his nod to become a clown in Texas. We've never met him in real life. Yeah, and just so many other things that when we're in the flow, it's like, but it's not us. It's no. principle. It will keep breaking out of the box because it cannot be contained, nor does it want to be contained, nor does it need to be contained because there is nothing to fear. Like, that's the whole message. There is nothing to fear. It actually, in the light of Kant, in love, which is the truth of who we are, it evaporates. And that's what Daryl was saying earlier. It's not becoming a bully to overcome a bully. You know? It's recognizing that a bully is nothing but a hurt person who's scared and insecure, and we don't need to fear them because when we're in love, there is no bully. When we stop bullying ourselves, there There's is no, no more bully. bully. We are the most powerful thing that has ever existed because there's only one power and it is the essence of everyone's being. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, the, you know, it, it's, we don't help the poor by becoming a part of the poor. No, yeah, that's right. We help, we help by r r raising up in consciousness, yeah. rising up in consciousness and, and being an example saying, and you too can do this. Yeah. You know, I want to, I just, um, can I read something from yes, Emma Curtis Hopkins? Please do, yes. Okay, this is from Emma Curtis Hopkins, who the Fillmore studied with, Ernest Holmes studied with, and she's called the teacher of teachers. And this is, um, um, she, te she impresses upon us to build this new faith, build this new faith. It's there for us. And this is what she says. If everything seems against us and everything hurts us greatly, we must put great energy into saying, I do not believe in sickness. I believe in health. I do not believe or think that misfortune has any power whatsoever. I believe in prosperity and success. Isn't that fabulous? Yes. That's great. I, I do not believe or think that misfortune has any power whatsoever. Yeah. As what you said, there's only one power. Um, I believe in prosperity. I believe in success. I just think, you know, we've just got to, the whole thing is staying awake and being yes. awake. Yes. Yeah. Staying awake because the rest yeah. is just 
It's voluntary hypnosis. That's what I've been calling it. Lovely. When I start looking at my phone and reading the little news items on the phone, I'm going, yeah. Daryl, you're good. Yeah. You're doing voluntary hypnosis. That's right. How's That's that making true. you feel? I feel bad. Now I'm starting <laughs> to believe this is everywhere. Well, the squatters are going to take over my home when I go out to walk Gidget. Right. And I'm not going to be able to get them to leave. Daryl, no, that's, that's voluntary funny. hypnosis. You just watched a little yep. scary video, didn't you? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Well, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly. I've been noticing the same thing. Those little little snippets of YouTube of the news or whatever it is. It's like the guy with it's the just, watch. It's plugging my brain in. Yeah, it's really plugging my brain into you nightmares. You are getting sleepy. Yes. <laughs> that's right. And and I mean, the Berend book is all about visualizing oh. and filling our minds with the thoughts that we choose to think. I heard something great last night, ladies and gentlemen. What? By the least likely person. Listen, you know, you can never judge a messenger by the messenger, but don't throw anyone out with the bathwater. Daryl yeah. and Ed yeah. don't. Where, God wherever, doesn't. Yeah, God doesn't. Wherever God comes through. Yes. Um, it's perfect if if it helps you. That's the message for you. I'm excited to hear who this is going to be. Well, I don't even know who she is really, but I heard her mm -hmm. uh, speak. And she was like an anonymous okay. person I never met and not any celebrity or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and she was, you know, for the most part, I had to keep going, wait a minute. This lady's out of her mind. Okay. <laughs> but, but. She did say something brilliant. And she said, you know, I used to be in so much pain, you know, as a victim, you know, because she did have some, she shared that she had some series of unfortunate things before she learned this stuff. Right. But she said the problem was I was always focusing on how that happened to me and why right. it's wrong and and I've suffered all these traumas. I have trauma and this and that. And she said, you know, then I realized what the real problem was. I have an obsessive mind. And once uh -huh. I realized I have an obsessive mind, I said, I could use my obsessive mind for good. Yeah. When, I start, when I start thinking about my problems, about, oh, my God, how am I going to make this work out? I go, that's your obsessive mind. Now let's use... Let's put the obsessive mind Perfect. chewing on, like, yeah. like, like, like Genevieve Baran yeah. said. Let's start thinking about the joyful things that are happening, the joyful things that have gone on in your past. Yeah. And start obsessing about those, you know? And I'm going, that's Perfect. a good one. Because yeah. that's, that's me. Oh, that's, a, that's a truth principle. Oh, yeah. And she, and she even started <laughs> totally. then giving examples of how the more she did this, the more seemingly magical things would happen yeah. in her life. People would give her money. Doors would open up. Opportunities would present themselves. And it, every okay. time she started obsessed about those rotten th conditions, mm -hmm. everything starts shrinking. Yep. Doors start closing. Yep. So she tells, nope, this is my obsessive mind. Let's chew on this instead. That's great. Ah. Okay. Fabulous. You, do you have the Joyce Kramer reading? Because it goes right along with what I you do. just read. I do. I do. And Joyce Kramer was a friend of mine. So uh, she was a wonderful metaphysician. Beautiful. So this is a reading by Joyce Kramer. And it's called Believe. Lord, I give thanks for the good that is already mine. And I use it wisely. The idea that one must be poor to be good was surely started by someone living in lack. <laughs> We still see people who parade their various lacks as goodness in an attempt to make up for their own inadequacy and failure feelings. Interesting that we just talked about that. I know. It's, it's, it's incredible. Abundance is, abundance is a part of the divine plan for the universe. God gives you riches of mind to be used wisely. The more you have, the more good you can do in your world. Your riches should enrich your own life and the lives of others. Give thanks that God is blessing you now in the wise use of riches. No matter how little or how much you have, it is your attitude that counts. You are as rich this moment 
as you can think in your mind. Mm. You are as good right now as you are in your thought. Fill your mind with ideas of God's abundant good. Seek a greater understanding of your relationship to God and be blessed. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful. Abundance is a part of the divine plan of the universe. I love that. So good. So good. So good. And exactly what we were speaking about. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I wanted to throw out there, if you want to get the email from Joyce Kramer to get a uh, reading just like this every day in your inbox, it's Joyce Kramer ministries.com. It's Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E, Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R, ministries.com. And you can get, because these readings, I appreciate it more and more the more we hear them on the show. They're the best. I, yeah, that's so cool that you knew Joyce as well, Nancy. Yeah. In fact, I went at one point in time in my life, I had heard she had collections of, of writings and early metaphysicians and I called her and I said, can I come up and spend a week in your library? And so I did. Wow. I spent a week with her. She brought out boxes, uh, files. I was, I, I had them all around me. She was, she was a true metaphysician and, um, uh, and lived it and lived it. Wonderful. And you know what? This is my this is, I just want to share this good news. It dawned on me. Was I talking to you on the phone when this dawned on me? Yeah. That, you know, if you're concerned, oh, I don't have a metaphysical type church near me, or where am I gonna learn this stuff? Or mm-hmm. you know, it sounds like a lot of them are taking a turn and there's no one I went tried this one church and no one was there and it was kind of like sitting through a old, dusty, old, you know, Mm -hmm. sermon. And I really was bored and I didn't get it. Well, I just want to reemphasize, I did not get this through unity as a church. I got high in the beginning when one guy not affiliated with any church named Mike Dugan uh, suggested I get around the year with Emmett Fox and read um, it every morning. Yeah. Which led to me getting at that time they had the Emmett Fox Treasury, which was five books of his. It had Around the Year. It had yeah. Find and Use Your Inner Power, The Power Through Constructive Thinking, and the Ten Commandments. And I forget what the fifth Sermon one. Sermon on the Mount. And Sermon on the Mount. And I would just take those books, like Find and Use Your Inner Power or Power Through Constructive Thinking. With me throughout my day, I'd read it on the bus to and from my duty station. I'd read, pull it out during work when I was at the police station, you know, on my breaks. And that was enough. Yeah. I discovered unity later on when someone suggested, hey, you know, there's a unity church near right, you. Right. And they do a Course in Miracles talk on Wednesdays. But I just don't want anyone to think, oh, Daryl and Ed, they were lucky. And we talk a lot about Unity of Santa Barbara. Yeah, Unity of Santa Barbara is a big road trip for Daryl and Ed. It's an hour and a half away. Right. We enjoy doing it now and again, but we don't do it all the time. The main thing is we have all these books. They're available to you. You have this podcast where you learn about these books and hear about us applying it and hearing our guests apply it. So... The main thing is that you have access to the knowledge and that you apply it because the church or being in that group setting can be fun, you know, but really this is something, this is, unfortunately, this is something that Daryl, Ed, Nancy, we do all on our own, but we're not alone in doing it. No. Because we read these books and we meet with other people and we hear each other on these shows. So we know on these podcasts, so we know we're not alone in doing it. And that gives me the faith to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll naturally start connecting with whoever you're meant to connect. I mean, I I went to Agape Spiritual Centers where I met Daryl, but I stopped going to Agape Spiritual Center and started reading some of these books and reading the Daily Word. And um, yeah, it's just the, the path will 
show itself to you. Yeah, I mean, you'll start attracting yeah. more and more people. A hundred percent. That will contribute to these ideas and be blessings in your life. Even how we met Nancy. I mean, how do you think we meet these people? Right. We don't even go out of our way. Someone suggests someone, we go, okay. And our 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 test, if they're going to be a great uh, guest, is we're really enthusiastic. Yep. Someone, either we're really enthusiastic on our own because we read something mm -hmm. or met someone or someone suggested them. But the real kicker is they're just as enthusiastic to be on the yeah. show. They'll get right back. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. And we're like, wow, okay. And we just know it's going to be great. Yeah, that's right. Right. Because the real test is do you get excited by the little miracles that occur when you live this stuff and practice this stuff? Because if you say the little miracles to someone who's not living by this stuff, they'll write it off and go, ah, that's whatever. But if you tell the miracles, the small miracles to someone who else, else who's living it, they'll go, wow, that's amazing. And then they'll share one of their miracles. Yeah, they'll go, you're not going to believe it. This yeah. happened to me too. Or and Two wow. or more are suddenly gathered in the spirit because it's about worshiping in spirit. It's about living in the spirit of these principles. And then miracles happen all the time. And by the way, unityjoyoflife.org is where you can hang out with Nancy Norman. And join us on Thursdays. Yeah, she's got the Infinite Prosperity. and A Workshop um, via Zoom. Yeah, and you can go online on YouTube and get her little one-minute th to three-minute, four-minute little, um, I forget what the name of the Kicks words. Upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> we call it Kicks Upstairs, but Nancy puts out a lot of great content. It's there for you. Weekly Wisdom. Weekly Wisdom. And um, yeah, I mean, the internet, if nothing, this is the information age. There used to be places you had to go to get this information. Made sense, right? Those doors have been blown off. You can get this information. It's Now it's just a matter of how do you apply the, and live by the information. It's there for you. You don't have to go anywhere to get it. Um, by the way, Daryl has a workshop. Throw it out there. This is the last week to sign yes, up. Yes, it's the intuitive method. Because the key to living this stuff really is following your intuitive guidance. That really is the Christ in you hope of glory. And it doesn't just guide you. When we let that, you know, I looked up the word. I was going to say when we let the genie out of the bottle. Did you know these three words I know. I think I already see them in my head. Go ahead. Genius, genuine, and genie. Yep. And the origin, you're going to be blown away. The origin of the word uh, genius is it's a spirit who guides and governs an individual through life. No. That's a G. That's the, so, you know, go, well, he's a genius. No, you're just being a martyr. You're a genius too. Yeah. And the letting the genie out of the bottle is not quenching the spirit of thinking, oh, I'm concerned. This doesn't, I don't know. Yeah, this is yeah. too risky. Well, this workshop helps you start to do it in a controlled environment where you can start practicing through art making, going with that intuitive thought, because there's very little risk. You're not going to die if you put the, if you make a mistake on a piece of paper, right? But that gives you the confidence then to recognize that feeling in your everyday affairs, and then follow those yes. silly ideas which are coming from your genius, your genuine self. Yes, and it's healing when we follow those things because we're letting that the God, the Christ within, the hope of glory or the genius, or the genie, or the universal spirit flow through us. Yeah. Because congestion is the only cause of all disease, and the cure is circulation. Or like Ed heard from Wayne Dyer, that depression is the opposite of expression. Right. So if you want to enjoy participating with all of us. Nancy will be there. Her daughter, Kathy, will be there. Many other folks. It's going to be Wednesdays. This is the next four Wednesdays at 4 o'clock Pacific time via Zoom. Go to darylanded.com and you'll see a click to join the workshop. Yeah. And what's the first date? 
First date is the third. April third, two thousand twenty-four. Yeah, and so the last day to sign up um, would probably be this Monday or Tuesday because then you'd be pushing it close to get some of the things you'll need for the class via Amazon or your local art store. Yeah. So hopefully you'll make it. And if not, they'll, I'm sure there'll be something in the future that we'll have going on. Yeah, there you go. And it's, yeah, the, the, this, all this is about the ability to continue to be yourself. Yes. And wake up from the hypnosis. You think about it, the geniuses oftentimes were just the ability to see the obvious when everyone else for some reason was like, that's a sin to think that. It's a sin to think that the, yes. the sun is the center. You know, like people were, but someone's like, no, I just happen well, to know this is the case intuitively. Yes. And I'm going to keep exploring it and keep exploring the things that are true for me. And that turns into be like the most genius things that like we take for granted. But when we share the genuine truth of what we, as we see it, it blows people's minds and, and it blesses everyone. And that's what Nancy does in her ministry. That's what we uh, do here. And that's what you're doing every time you live by these principles and just let your true light shine. Let your genie out of the bottle. Let the genie out the bottle. Anything else, Nancy, before we uh, share a little story? You know what? Since you talked about the genius, I want to share an affirmation from Florence Scovel Shin. Yes. The The genius within me is now released. I am now on the royal road, the royal road of success, happiness, abundance, all traffic is going my way. Wow. The genius within me is released. Yes. Oh, read it one more time. That okay. is too good to not the, read the twice. The genius within me is now released. I am now on the royal road of success, happiness, and abundance. All traffic goes my way. I just love that. Uh, that makes me feel yeah. good. Just <laughs> oh yeah, it's like riding that wave of traffic of green traffic lights in New York City. If you yes. time it just right, you can go far. That's right. Far. I love it. Yeah. So hang out with Miracle. Nancy. Another one from from um, Florence Scovel Shin that I use all the time. Miracle follows miracle, and wonders never cease. Yes. Yes. yes miracle indeed. Follows miracle and wonders never cease. I'll tell you, writing a thank you letter to God every day or multiple times a day has really is opening my door, just like the way your friends that shared. There's something about getting on that frequency, because yeah. there's at any moment, you have to admit, if you just change your focus, there is so much to be grateful for. Do it with the light touch. Take your time in your, your own laboratory to imagine what you want when you're not trying to argue with anyone else or try to worry what anyone else thinks. Use the light touch. That's all it takes. It, it really does work. If Again, if you want to hang out with Nancy Norman, unityjoyoflife.org. Uh, we found a story, Nancy. Oh! Apparently, it was late in the day one day when Nancy Norman pulled up to the campsite with a fully loaded minivan. As soon as they stopped, the doors opened and the children flew out, began to unload the gear and feverishly set up the tent in minutes. The camper in the space next to them marveled to Nancy. I've never seen such teamwork, nor a camp that was ready so quickly. I'm impressed. And you didn't even raise your voice. Nancy turned to the neighbor with a and nodded sagely. I have a system. No one goes to the bathroom before the camp is set up. Oh, I love that. (laughs) That'll work every time. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's funny. So we have a little... Affirmative jingle. I was going to get the official name. Yes. It is from Katrina and the Waves. The Waves. It is yeah, Waves. It is. That's amazing that I didn't pick up on that. Katrina and the Waves. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is he coming in with a guitar? Mm-hmm. Wow. We got a live musician. Here's folks. the thing, man. Oh. Go ahead. I used, used to, to think man. God loved me. me. No. All right. <laughs> oh, let's go again. <laughs> Keep going. I used, used to think maybe God loved me, me. but now, baby, I'm sure. And, and just I just can't wait till the day when he knocks on my door. 
Now every time I go to the mailbox, gotta hold myself down. Cause I just can't wait till you ride me when you're coming around. I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! And don't it feel good? Hey, all right now! Don't it feel good? <laughs> hey, yeah! <laughs> Visit DarylNed.com Unityjoyoflife.org Find easy links to everything we do I'm walking on sunshine Whoa I'm walking on sunshine Whoa I'm walking on sunshine Whoa And don't it feel good Hey, all right now And don't it feel good one more time, don't it feel good? Hey, yeah! Don't it feel good? Woo! Not bad for our first rehearsal with guitar. I, I'll tell you what, I love that. Walking on sunshine. I can feel that. That feels good. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Nancy Norman. We love you, Reverend. Recording your podcast at home. Or using cheap gear. Or spending all your time editing or here at chobo we have podcast studios podcast editing podcast distribution podcast clips and don't forget the snack bar completely automate your podcast or just delegate the work you don't want to do 